The Battle of Cape Matapan was a Second World War naval engagement fought from 27 to 29 March 1941. The Cape is on the southwest coast of Greece's Peloponnesian Peninsula, acting on intercepted signals broken by the government code and cipher school at Bletchley Park. A force of British Royal Navy ships accompanied by several Royal Australian Navy vessels, under the command of British Admiral Andrew Cunningham, intercepted and sank or severely damaged several ships of the Italian Regi Marina under Squadron Vice Admiral Angelo Lucchino. The opening actions of the battle are also known in Italy as the Battle of Gorda. Background in late March 1941, as British ships of the Mediterranean fleet covered troop movements to Greece, Mavis Beatty, a cryptographer at Bletchley Park, made a breakthrough, reading the Italian naval enigma for the first time. The first message, the cryptic, today's the day minus three, was followed three days later by a second message reporting the sailing of an Italian battle fleet, comprising one battleship six heavy and two light cruisers, plus destroyers to attack the convoys. As always with Enigma, the intelligence breakthrough was concealed from the Italians by ensuring there was a plausible reason for the Allies to have detected and intercepted their fleet. In this case, it was a carefully directed reconnaissance plane. As a further deception, Admiral Cunningham made a surreptitious exit after dark from a golf club in Alexandria to avoid being seen going on board his flagship, the battleship HMS War Spite. He had made a point of arriving at the club the same afternoon, with his suitcase prominently paraded as if for an overnight stay and spent time on the golf course within sight of the Japanese consul. An evening party on his flagship was advertised for that night but was never meant to take place. At the same time, there was a failure of intelligence on the Axis side. The Italians had been wrongly informed that the Mediterranean fleet had only one operational battleship and no aircraft carrier but there were three battleships and a damaged British aircraft carrier had been replaced by HMS Formidable. Opposing Forces The Allied force was the British Mediterranean fleet, consisting of the aircraft carrier HMS Formidable and the battleships HMS Barham. Valiant and War Spite. The main fleet was accompanied by two flotillas of destroyers. The 10th flotilla had HMS Greyhound and Griffin and HMAS Stewart commanded by Commander HEC Walla Ran. The 14th flotilla consisted of HMS Jervis, Janus, Mohawk and Nubian commanded by Philip Mack. Also present were HMS Hotspur and Havoc. A second force, under Admiral Sir Henry Pridham Whipple, consisted of the British light cruisers HMS Ajax, Gloucester and Orion, the Australian light cruiser HMAS Perth and the British destroyers HMS Hazy, Herowood and Ilex. The Australian HMAS Vendetta had returned to Alexandria. Allied warships attached to convoys were available, such as HMS Defender, Jaguar and Juno waited in the Kithira Channel and HMS Decoy, Carlisle, Calcutta and Bonaventure and HMAS Vampire were nearby. The Italian fleet was led by Ayashino's flagship, the modern battleship Vittorio Veneto. It also included almost the entire Italian heavy cruiser force, Zara, Fiume and Pola, four destroyers of the 9th Flotilla. The heavy cruisers Trieste, Trento and Bolzano were accompanied by three destroyers of the 12th flotilla, plus the light cruisers Duca degli Abruzzi and Giuseppe Garibaldi and two destroyers of the 16th flotilla from Brindisi. None of the Italian ships had radar, while several Allied ships did. The 13th flotilla of Italian destroyers, with Alpino, Basagera, Fusilia, Granatier was also involved screening the flagship battle. On 27 March, Vice Admiral Pridham Whipple, with the cruisers Ajax, Gloucester, Orion and Perth and a number of destroyers, sailed from Greek waters for a position south of Crete. Admiral Cunningham with formidable war spite, Barham and Valiant left Alexandria on the same day to meet the cruisers. 
The Italian fleet was spotted by a Sunderland flying boat at 1200, depriving Lucino of any advantage of surprise. The Italian admiral also learned that Formidable was at sea, thanks to the decryption team aboard Vittorio Veneto. Nevertheless, after some discussion, the Italian headquarters decided to go ahead with the operation, in order to show the Germans their will to fight and confidence in the higher speed of their warships. Action off Gavdos on 28 March, an Amarm Ro 43 float plane launched by Vittorio Veneto spotted the British cruiser squadron at 6.35. At 7.55, the Trento group encountered Admiral Pridham Whipple's cruiser group south of the Greek island of Gavdos. The British squadron was heading to the southeast. Thinking they were attempting to run from their larger ships, the Italians gave chase, opening fire at A-12 from 24,000 yards. The three heavy cruisers fired repeatedly until 8.55, with Trieste firing 132 armor-piercing rounds, Trento firing 204 armor-piercing and 10 explosive shells and Bolzano firing another 189 armor-piercing shells. But the Italians experienced trouble with their range-finding equipment and scored no significant hits. HMS Gloucester fired three salvos in return. These fell short but did cause the Italians to make a course change. As the distance had not been reduced after an hour of pursuit, the Italian cruisers broke off the chase, turning to the northwest on a course to rejoin Vittorio Veneto. The Allied ships changed course in turn, following the Italian cruisers at extreme range. Licino let them come on in hopes of luring the British cruisers into the range of Vittorio Veneto's guns. An officer eating a sandwich on Orion's bridge remarked to a companion, What's that battleship over there? I thought ours were miles away. The Italians eavesdropped on Orion's signal that she had sighted an unknown unit and was going to investigate. At 10.55, Vittorio Veneto joined the Italian cruisers and immediately opened fire on the shadowing Allied cruisers. She fired 94 rounds from a distance of 25,000 yards, all well aimed but again with an excessive dispersal of her salvos. The Allied cruisers, until then unaware of the presence of a battleship, withdrew, suffering slight damage from 381mm shell splinters. A series of photographs taken from HMS Gloucester showing Italian salvos falling amongst Allied warships was published by Life magazine on 16 June 1941. Vittorio Veneto fired a total of 94 shells in 29 salvos. Another 11 rounds got jammed in the barrels. Air attacks Cunningham's force, which had been attempting to rendezvous with Pridham Whipel, had launched an attack by Ferry Albacore torpedo bombers from HMS Formidable at 9.38. They attacked Vittorio Veneto without direct effect but the required maneuvering made it difficult for the Italian ships to maintain their pursuit. The Italian ships fired 152, 190mm guns and also 37, 20 and 13.2mm guns when at close range, repelling the attack. While one of the two Junkers Du-88s escorting the Italian fleet was shot down by a ferry full mayor, Lucino broke off the pursuit at 12.20, retiring towards his own air cover at Taranto. A second attack surprised the Italians at 15.09, when Lieutenant Commander Daliel Stead flew his albacore to 1,094 yards from Vittorio Veneto before releasing a torpedo which hit her outer port propeller and caused 4,000 long tons of flooding. Dalielstead and his crew were killed when their aircraft was shot down by anti-aircraft fire from the battleship. The ship stopped while the damage was repaired but she was able to get underway again at 1642, making 19 knots. Cunningham heard of the damage to Vittorio Veneto and started a pursuit. A third attack by six albacores and two fairy swordfish from 826 and 828 naval air squadrons from Formidable and two swordfish from 815 squadron from Crete. 
was made between 1936 and 1950. Admiral Licino deployed his ships in three columns and used smoke, searchlights and a heavy barrage to protect the Vittorio Veneto. The tactics protected the battleship from further damage but one torpedo hit the Polar, which had nearly stopped in order to avoid running into the Fiume and could not take any avoiding action. This blow knocked out five boilers and the main steam line, causing Polar to lose electric power and drift to a stop. The torpedo was apparently dropped by Lieutenant FMA, Torrance Spence. Unaware of Cunningham's pursuit, a squadron of cruisers and destroyers were ordered to return and help Polar. This squadron was composed of Polar's sister ships, Zara and Fumi. The squadron did not start to return towards Polar until about an hour after the order had been given by Lucino, officially due to communication problems, while Vittorio Veneto and the other ships continued to Taranto. Night action at 2015, Orion's radar picked up a ship six miles to port, apparently dead in the water, she was the crippled Polar. The bulk of the Allied forces detected the Italian squadron on radar shortly after 2200, and were able to close without being detected. The Italian ships had no radar and could not detect British ships by means other than sight. Italian thinking did not envisage night actions and the Italians had their main gun batteries disarmed. They managed to spot the Allied squadron at 2220, which they thought to be Italian ships. The battleship Sparum, Valiant and Warspite were able to close to 3,800 yards unnoticed by the Italian ships, point-blank range for battleship guns, at which point they opened fire. The Allied searchlights illuminated their enemy, the searchlights aboard Valiant under the command of a young Prince Philip. Some British gunners witnessed the cruiser's main turrets flying dozens of meters into the air. After just three minutes, Fiume and Zara had been destroyed. Fiume sank at 2330, while Zara was finished off by a torpedo from the destroyer HMS Jervis at 240 of the 29th of March. Two Italian destroyers, Vittorio Alfieri and Giosere Carducci, were sunk in the first five minutes. The other two, Giobatti and Oriani, managed to escape, the former with heavy damage. The British boarding parties seized a number of the much-needed breeder anti-aircraft machine guns. Polar was eventually sunk with torpedoes by the destroyers Jervis and Nubian after her crew was taken off, shortly after 400. The only known Italian reaction after the shocking surprise was a fruitless torpedo charge by some destroyers and the aimless fire of one of Zara's 40mm guns in the direction of the British warships. The Allied ships took on survivors but left the scene in the morning, fearing Axis air strikes. Admiral Cunningham ordered a signal to be made on the Merchant Marine Emergency Band. This signal was received by the Italian High Command. It informed him that due to airstrikes the Allied ships had ceased their rescue operations and it granted safe passage to a hospital ship for rescue purposes. The location of the remaining survivors was broadcast and the Italian hospital ship Grade Scar came to recover them. Allied casualties during the battle were a single torpedo bomber shot down by Vittorio Veneto's 90mm anti-aircraft batteries. With the loss of the three-man crew, Italian losses were up to 2,303 sailors, most of them from Zara and Fiume. The Allies rescued 1,015 survivors, while the Italians saved another 160. Aftermath Balance of naval power in the Mediterranean Matapan was Italy's greatest defeat at sea, subtracting from its order of battle a cruiser division. But the battle was hardly decisive. The British in the Mediterranean lost the heavy cruiser York and the new light cruiser Bonaventure in the same period. However, whilst the Royal Navy lost four heavy cruisers during the entire war, at Matapan the Regia Marina lost three heavy cruisers in a single night. 
The fact that the Italians had sortied so far to the east established a potential threat that forced the British to keep their battleships ready to face another such sortie during the operations off Greece and Crete. After the defeat at Cape Matapan, the Italian Admiral Licino wrote that the battle had the consequence of limiting for some time our operational activities, not for the serious moral effects of the losses, as the British believed but because the operation revealed our inferiority in effective aero-naval cooperation and the backwardness of our night battle technology. The Italian fleet did not venture into the eastern Mediterranean again until the fall of Crete two months later. The escape of the Italian battleship was, in the words of the British Admiral, much to be regretted. The government code and cipher school, Bletchley Park for reasons of operational security and secrecy, Code breakers at the GC and CS were rarely informed about the operational effects of their work. The impact on the Battle of Cape Matapan was a rare exception to this rule. A few weeks after the end of the battle, Admiral Cunningham dropped into Bletchley Park personally to congratulate Dilly and his girls with a positive impact on morale. Mavis Beatty, one of the code breakers, remembers. Our sense of elation knew no bounds when Cunningham came down in person to congratulate us. Admiral John Godfrey, the Director of Naval Intelligence, stated, Tell Dilly that we have won a great victory in the Mediterranean and it is entirely due to him and his girls. Post-war there is still controversy in Italy regarding the orders given by the Italian Admiral Angelo Lacino to the Zara division in order to recover the Polar. When it was clear that an enemy battleship force was steaming from the opposite direction, for decades after the end of the Second World War, the involvement of the GC and CS, as well as the code-breaking methods used, were kept secret. A number of controversial theories were published before more complete accounts emerged after records were declassified in 1978. Only later, after Dilly's rodding method was demonstrated by Mavis Beatty to the Admiral in charge of naval history, were Italian official records corrected. In 1966, Montgomery Hyde published a story alleging that a spy seduced Admiral Alberto Ley and that she obtained a code book used by the British to defeat the Italians at Matapan. Hyde was found guilty of libeling the dead but evidence of GC and CS involvement was not made public at that time. In 1980, a BBC series Spy included similar allegations about a spy called Cynthia who obtained a code book. In 1974, Frederick Winterbotham in the ultra-secret falsely credited the decryption of Luftwaffe Enigma traffic, order of battle. Italy Amaralio di Squadra Angelo Lucino 1 battleship, Vittorio Veneto 4 destroyers, Alpino, Basadura, Fusilier, Granitea, Amaralio di Divisione Antonio Legnani 2 light cruisers, Duca degli Abruzzi, Giuseppe Garibaldi 2 destroyers, Emmanuel Persignor, Nicolosa d'Areco, Amaralio di Divisione Luigi Sansonetti 3 heavy cruisers, Bolzano, Trento, Trieste 3 destroyers, Ascari, Carabiniera, Corazia, Amaralio di Divisione Carlo Catania 3 heavy cruisers, Fiume, Pola, Zara 4 destroyers, Vittorio Alfieri, Giosere Carducci, Vincenzo Giobatti, Alfredo Oriani, Allies Force A, 14th Destroyer Flotilla, 10th Destroyer Flotilla, Force B, 2nd Destroyer Flotilla, Force D, Admiral Sir Andrew Cunningham, 3 battleships, HMS Barham, Valiant, and Warspite 1 aircraft carrier, HMS Formidable 9 destroyers, HMS Greyhound, Griffin, Jervis, Janus, Mohawk, Nubian, Hotspur and Havoc and HMAS Stewart, Vice Admiral Henry Pridham Whippell 4 Light Cruisers, HMS Ajax, Gloucester and Orion and HMAS Perth 3 Destroyers, HMS Hazy, Herowood and Ilex, Ag 9 Convoy 2 Light Cruisers, HMS Calcutta and Carlisle 3 Destroyers, 
HMS Defender and Jaguar and HMAS Vampire, Gorate Convoy 1 Anti-Aircraft Cruiser, HMS Bonaventure 2 Destroyers, HMS Decoy and Juno 1 Merchant Ship, Thermopylae.